Hello again, everyone. Another message through Facebook. Hello, Ali Matthews. I've been watching your vids just last night. I try to keep up to date on current events, and I heard about you through Scariest Movie Ever on YouTube. That's a good uh, YouTube page, uh, Scariest Movie Ever, for anybody who wants to check it out. I'm in a situation where I believe my daughter's father to be a total narcissist. I followed, I'll just leave it out, uh, for a while on YouTube and came to the conclusion on my own that he was more of a covert or ER-like, ER-like narcissist. Um, let me just say something right here. Um, I know who she's talking about. Um, and there's two of them that I get questions about. Uh, both of them are overseas and they do narcissism blogs as well. And people want my opinion on them. I don't really watch them. Not, they don't take that as negative or positive. I really don't watch other people's stuff on narcissism. It has no effect on um, my opinion or anything about them. I'm not making any opinions about them. Um, the, the one guy, um, because I'm on a video that Scariest Movie Ever did with him, I saw that and you know he seems to know his stuff. But I, I make no distinction. I have no real opinion about them either way. So I do get questions about them, but I, I don't know. I haven't, and I'm, that's not an indictment against, for or against them. I just don't really watch watch them. I began to take action to get out, out of here. We live together. Just as I started to slowly and quietly make my way out, I ran into some information regarding Asperger's syndrome. What was strange was I suspected that my daughter might be an Aspie because my neighbor's daughter was diagnosed with it and it sounded like something to look into. She's incredibly intelligent for her age. She speaks as clear as a five or six year old and she's only two. She has many traits of an Asperger's child. Then I discovered this can be hereditary. Then it all began to make such so much sense. I thought maybe her dad has this. Believe me, Asperger's traits describe him very accurately. Right. And Asperger's is really like a social anxiety, which makes people shut down and makes them focus on one specific thing. Um, it can be hereditary and I, I, or it could be a learned condition. I really don't know all that much about it. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely a possibility. Aha, of course, I thought. You know, I've actually heard that people with Asperger's are, are misdiagnosed with NPD all the time. I think from the guy who wrote the narcissistic book, Sam, but don't quote me. Um, yeah, I've heard that too. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Some of their traits can come off as narcissistic. I've also heard it confused with said, said same thing said about uh, autism as well. It's just extreme narcissism narcissism. I don't know. Those are medical conditions that have been diagnosed. Um, I, I would be careful to label everyone like that. I'm sure there are some narcissists that fall into those categories who are, who are misdiagnosed, but I don't know how wide ranging it would be. But some of the characteristics are very, are very similar. Anyway, I talked with her dad and we reconnected for the first time in years. He was very accepting of the fact that he may have this unusual brain rewiring and be on the autistic spectrum. He agreed to see a neurophysiologist after his insurance began at his new job in the hopes of getting a diagnosis and getting further therapy to help relate to others like me who are considered neurotypical. This could wind up being a very long message. There's so much more to this. I've considered starting my own channel on YouTube. I digress. To make a long story short, he never did get help, and everything has spiraled out of control again. That's because narcissists make promises they never intend to keep. They make promises, you know, in the hopes of gaining something that they know they're not going to keep. And that's the problem. It's, again, it's that carrot at the end of the stick that they like to pull. Narcissists make promises that they know they're not going to keep. Actually, yes, concrete complete control and at times I feel so drained it's almost paralyzing. I am a stay-at-home mom of two small children. I'm breastfeeding one of them. I'm struggling to make ends meet. He works a lot and I take care of them and the housework. He controls everything. I got a waitress job about three or four months after giving birth. I had the job for two weeks until he refused to watch them both while I worked. Yes, because he wants an indentured servant. 
that's what these narcissists want. So even if you're making money, they're going to view that money you're making as a threat to them that you're going to be able to leave. Okay, and then it takes away from your indentured servitude for them. I had a little extra money coming in through selling crap I didn't need on eBay. He canceled my PayPal card one day out of the blue for no reason. And they love to do that. They love to take your bank accounts, your money, they cancel your credit cards, and it's out of spite. I found out when I tried to buy diapers one day. He turned my phone off for a few hours two nights ago while he was visiting my sister. Yeah, this guy doesn't have Asperger's. He's just a narcissistic asshole because he's well aware of what he's doing. My birthday was on that same Monday, and he told me he would help renew my plates. Then he acted like he didn't know what I was talking about when I brought up needing the money. Again, promises that they never intend to keep. My dad, my stepdad took care of it for me, but he told me to tell him he's a cheap bastard for him. LOL. My mom and stepdad want me to get want me to get all of mine and the girls' things together and move out ASAP. And you should. I have a hard time accepting help. We all do. We all do. I have a hard time accepting help. They don't have very much room for us there, but I figure that it's better better than low-income housing or a battered women's shelter, right? Absolutely. At least we would be saved. I'm going to apply at low-income apartments tomorrow morning. It only takes a week or two to go through, and I know the area well. One of my very close girlfriends lives there also. I don't want the situation to mess up a relationship, my relationship with my mom or stepdad. My mom has some issues. She's a closet associate these days. My sister just moved into a new apartment and was staying with my mom before this. This was her second time around being over there. My older brother had to go at had a go at living with them too. You know the deal. Two months turns into two years. They take advantage. I can't do it. My mom and dad have lived their, lived their lives. They need their time and their space too. They met, in, they, they met late in their lives and I need to be considerate of their relationship too. But I'm grateful to take the help with moving or anything else. Well, you see, you know, because all these other people are taking advantage now when you really need help, you're afraid to. But you're not, you don't seem like the type that's going to sit on your ass and just sit there for two years. So take the help. I'm hoping and praying I get into these apartments. My girlfriend told me there are plenty of people who have, who have got in without a job. She said, as long as you have your kids and you aren't a felon. So considering that all the praying I'll be doing, I believe this work, this will work out. I guess if, if it doesn't, there's always my parents' place. I should have done this long before they even considered offering. I'm sure you receive a lot of messages. If you happen to read this and have any thoughts to share, I'd appreciate it very much. Look, if your parents are offering you a safe place to stay that's better than a battered women's shelter, I would t I, I would go with your parents and get a job and then get on your feet and get out. You're going to be better off than being in a public shelter. It's amazing how the hardest part of the situation is when you're leaving or when you've already left. The level of anxiety is incredible. If you can address this any further, I'd love that. Well, of course, and that's what the narcissist preys on. They prey on your anxiety because when you're anxious and when your mind's going a mile a minute, you're much easier to manipulate. Take the help from your parents. My mom has been physically abused, has been in physically abusive relationships, and I know others who have been in similar situations. However, the abuse from a narcissist seems so unique because it's so much mental too. Not only is it physical, it's mental. And it's the mental stuff that seems like a black eye, a broken nose, as horrible as they are, will heal. This mental stuff that we'll be dealing with for the rest of our lives doesn't. However, the abuse from a narcissist seems so unique. It's not. It's not. It's unique because we don't talk about it and not much is known about it. It's not unique. Their tactics aren't unique, what they do isn't unique, and how you're feeling after dealing with them for so long is not unique. What's unique is us talking about it and now exposing it. That's what's becoming unique. The day this isn't unique anymore, we'll actually get somewhere. 
I don't think anyone close to me understands. They try to compare their physically abusive relationships to this. And although it's a very unfortunate situation, I truly believe it doesn't touch the abuse from the narcissist. I don't know if it matters, but I meant to add that on my birthday night last Monday, I arrived home and was upset about my phone. I confronted him about it and he began to react in a very overly dramatic way. He criticized me and spit out all kinds of nonsense. Well, that's what they do when they're challenged and cornered. They go crazy and then they start make, they start acting erratically and that's just to get you under control. I went into another room to care for the girls and he came in to threaten that he was going to call the police on me. I started to panic. I asked why he wanted to do that and what I did to make him want to call 911. He told me he wanted me removed and he'd lie and say I hit him, say I hit him if he had to. He said, I'm calling now and went into the other room saying he needed an officer at our address. I held my girls and cried my eyes out. I tried to explain to my two-year-old that mama might, not, might need to leave for a little while, but I'd be back. You know, you're falling for his bullshit. You're falling for his bullshit because that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted you to cry so you'd, you'd grovel. He staged the whole thing knowing I had no phone. He never actually called. He's like a monster. You know, he is a monster. I've been with this guy for seven years on and off. I'm recently 28. I'm 28 recently and feel 100. He's getting worse and I can't wait to be on with my life. Why is it harder to be around them when you're planning to leave? I don't know. You're probably shaking your head reading all this. I actually feel very vulnerable putting all this out there for a stranger. Feels good to put it out there though. And as I said, when you write this stuff out, it helps. And just to go show you, whether it's a narcissistic woman claiming false domestic violence or, or a narcissistic male claiming false domestic violence, they both do it. It's a tactic of the narcissist. So when he calls, okay, if, I don't know where you are right now because I haven't gotten to the end of your letter. If he ever calls, all you say is he has a narcissistic personality disorder. This is how he acts out. And leave it at that. Say he's disordered. And you tell him the truth, and he's completely unstable. And I'd like you to escort me and my children out of here. And then I would call my parents, okay? While the police are there, so you do it calmly. You don't get emotional. Say, I just want to leave with my kids. He is, he is personality disordered. And you leave it at that. And then you'll watch him freak out in front of the cops. And they will stand there while you leave with your children, unless he has any type of proof of physical violence, which he's not going to have. He's getting worse. I can't wait to be on with my life. Why is it harder to be around them when you're planning the leap? Because they can sense it. They know when they're, when, when they're coming to the end of their rope. Keep on the watch. There's a lot going on. We must all keep aware and be prepared. I know we're in a spiritual world. These times make our culture very narcissistic. Absolutely. I'm not surprised at the intensity of it all. The only way to move forward, take care. Okay. You need to get out of there. You need to get out of there soon. If your parents are, are, are offering you help, take it. But the overall thing I'm getting out of, you, out of your messages and the thing everybody needs to remember the narcissist is always going to make promises that they have no intention of keeping. It's only to keep you under control. So don't fall for it. Thanks for the letter. I hope your situation gets better. I really do. For your sake and your children's sake, you need to get out as quickly as possible. Again, for anybody else who's watched, Watch this and is in a similar situation. You know the deal. Again, these narcissists use the same tactics over and over and over again. They're not unique. They're not unique at all. They're all the same. Okay, so if you enjoy this channel, please consider making a contribution to the GoFundMe link in the description box. And remember, if you want a video made about your story and you make a contribution, you go right to the top of the list and I immediately make a video for you. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks again for watching. See you all again shortly.